Father, we thank you. You are in front and we say, be glorified. Let your voice be heard. We incline our ear to you. Let your voice be heard in the nations. Let your voice be seen in the nations. Be glorified, Lord. Be glorified in the nations. Be glorified in this nation. Be glorified as we gather. Be glorified. In the midst of war, in the midst of terror, let your name be glorified. Be glorified, Jesus. Be glorified, Lord. Be glorified, our King. Be glorified, Lord. We worship you, Lord. Oh, we worship you. We worship you. Shall we stand to worship Hallelujah. Jesus? Hallelujah. If you can, why don't you rise to your feet and let's Thank worship you, the Father. King together. Oh, be glorified, be glorified, be glorified, be glorified, be glorified. Be
Jane shortly in here as well um, but Sarah Jane is an intercessory leader she's a co-host of us for those of you know power hour I, I can't even do honor to that power hour um, with Emma Stark and Sam Robertson she operates as a seer prophet she carries on an impartation of, to help us grow in the spirit. And she, uh, she wrote a book recently. Uh, she wrote a book recently called uh, Seeing Beyond. I, I had struggled reading this book when I bought it. And um, I just couldn't get beyond the first few pages. The foreword by, uh, by Emma and another author, I think it was uh, Jane. Hammond, if I'm, correct me if I'm wrong, and uh, I just couldn't get beyond this, and at one point I just thought, do you know what, I'm not getting the book, uh, I, I can't read through it, so something was just blocking me, and I thought maybe it's just not the right time, and uh, Pastor Dave, being the prophetic leader he is, he messaged me a few, couple of weeks ago, it was a week or something like that, a couple of weeks ago, and he sent a screenshot from the book, he said, oh, you've got to read this. And it was to do about something he wanted to point to, to me to pray for. But I thought, I am missing out. I need to read this book. So you can see here, this is my copy. Um, I've made so much, uh, so many notes on it that I need to go back to. It's a, it's a rich book for seeing in the spirit, seeing beyond. And I recommend it to you. We have three copies here left in the in the, um, uh, in the chapel, but for those of you who can find the book online, uh, make sure you buy this book. If you're here and you see I can't see in the spirit, I can't hear, get this book, okay? Um, and so, just briefly before, we, are we ready to welcome Sarah Jane? Sounds going to work fine. Four words from Emma Stark about, um, about seeing beyond. He said, as you begin this journey of seeing beyond, please know that Sarah Jane is a model for how our life can be. 
seeing into the spirit realm is not reserved just for the Old Testament characters. It is now, uh, it, and it's not strange, it is vital and biblical normal for us. And so we welcome Sarah Jane today. She will speak to us about seeing in the spirit and then she will do impartation later on. Amen. Amen. Woohoo. Thank you, River Church. Thank you for having me. Can you hear me okay? Sounds like there's a bit of feedback. Are you hearing me well? Can someone tell me? Moment, Sarah Jane. I, sorry, I can't hear what you're saying. Yes, I can hear you. Wonderful, wonderful. Great. I don't just want to talk to myself. <laughs> so I could happily do that for an hour and a half and then release impartation from here, but I'd love you to hear it. So as I was being introduced, yeah, rightly so, I am based normally in Scotland um, where I work with Global Prophetic Alliance and I've been part of the leadership team there since the early days in 2009. Uh, my responsibility is to equip and activate seers and strategic prayers, those who are going to pray and release revelation and spiritual warfare strategies to change and shape nations, as well as equipping the church uh, in this hour, which is you today, um, to see and sense in the spirit why we may ask. Let's find out. You can absolutely read my book, Seeing Beyond. It's available from our shop, GPA, if they run out there um, in the room. But also you can get it on Amazon and there's audio and everything else that you need. But the, the point is to do business with this. And one of the things that I really feel like the Lord is saying to us all as Christians in this hour is that we must not be lazy. We must not be those who look to others to bring revelation to us, but we must be diligent in pursuing gifts of prophecy, like Apostle Paul says, lost, zealously lost, in fact, he says, zealously lost after the gift of prophecy. And that sense of actually apprehending revelation through the process of focus and attention to what God is saying and what he is doing. Didn't Jesus say, I only do what I see the Father doing? But how can we do that, like Jesus did, if we can't actually see in the spirit and engage in the spirit realm? So if this is new to you, you are very, very in, much in good company because I, I had not seen anything or sensed anything in the spirit before I got baptized in the Holy Spirit. And I was having dreams and I was having what I would call impressions uh, but then once I got baptized in the Holy Spirit the whole world of seeing and sensing in the spirit opened up to me and I believe and I believe then that it was normal I just thought that everybody who got baptized in the Holy Spirit could then see and sense in the spirit and begin to understand what was going on I soon found out when I started to share some of my stories and experiences that that actually wasn't the case but I do believe it is supposed to be normal. It is supposed to be every day. And it is supposed to be something where we in this era as the church are moving into the Holy Spirit era that we get to move with, see with, sense with Holy Spirit and what he's doing so that we can co-labor as citizens of heaven with the Spirit of God and his plans of advancement of the kingdom. Amen. So the church that is hooked into the heart of God and is seeing him and the world we live in through the eyes and senses of revelation is the church that is the victorious church. The spirit revolution has already begun on the earth and God is saying over us, over me, over you individually and together, be awakened revelation church. See and know I am God and see what I see and partner with me in a new way in this fresh Holy Spirit era time. Fix your eyes on me. Second Corinthians 418. Paul said, fix your eyes on the unseen for what is unseen is eternal and what is seen is temporal. So what we see in the natural, what we see in the room you're sitting in right now is temporary, isn't it? What we're seeing on the news when we see nations fighting over nations is temporary. It is not eternal. So the Lord is saying, take note of what is going on in the natural realm. 
But actually, the the most important thing, important thing, important thing is to look beyond, is to see beyond, and is to engage our senses with that which is unseen at this time. Why is this important? The seeing church is the victorious church. The seeing and sensing church is the church that becomes the church that is more than conquerors. And who wants to be in a church that is a more than conquering church? Amen. We want to be able to conquer, to push back and displace darkness and to apprehend that which darkness has stolen from us. We need to be the Ephesians 6 church where we're not looking to war against each other and flesh and blood, even in nations, but we are looking beyond and seeing the powers and the principalities. So we're seeing what God is doing and we're partnering with him and we're seeing what the enemy is doing so that we can get ahead of him and displace him from the places of influence that he has. But we have to be willing, we must be willing to be led and trained and counseled by Holy Spirit to have any hope of victory. So the first thing we need to do is say, some of you might be able to do this easier than others, I yield to you, Holy Spirit. I submit to you, God, because there has to be that sense of the heart submitting, our will submitting my rights being laid down to say, God, your way is more important than what I feel is more important. The time of my life is your time. The times of my life is my your time. Life. God, have your life. Life. There has to be another level of surrender. There has to be another level of laying one's life down for the Lord and allowing him to use us in the way that he wants to use us. Amen. So I know that some of you very much, God, I give you my life. I lay myself down. I submit and I yield. But trust me when I say there's always another level of yielding. There are stages in our life. There are times in our life when we get to a point of new era change in the church as we have had recently where the lord begins to push us and say are you willing to go the next level are you willing to go to that next place of freedom and release because truly church if we are going to be those who move outside of man-made structures which god is calling us to do at this time if we're being willing to move with holy spirit freely then we have to get over the things that have hindered ourselves the best way to do that is submit to god james 4 7 submit to god Resist the devil then and he will flee. So the, that submission part is always something that many of us leave out. Resist the devil and he will flee. But actually in the submission, we are released from all hindrances. So even as your host there was sharing about the difficulty of picking up my book, I do believe that there is that resistance, fear, fear, fear of man, fear of the unknown, um, not sure why this is important um, because we're used to you know doing things a certain way we're used to working with the Lord a certain way but here's the thing Holy Spirit is challenging us right now and the only way we get to really hear and see and feel those challenges is if we are willing to put ourselves in a place where we say Lord open my eyes and let me see but also trust me when I say it's much easier much faster much more fun and less challenge and tension if we submit to God and his ways and pray prayers like, Lord, whatever it looks like, I say yes to you. Whoa, that's a bold prayer, isn't it right there? God, I say yes to you, whatever it looks like. And I am willing to be led by you, Holy Spirit, wherever you lead me, whatever you want to show me, whenever you want to show it to me. And knowing that it's not our responsibility to fix everything that he shows us, but that God shows us the way. So in that introduction, I, I want to kind of, if you will, pull that together in this phrase that a new era of church requires a new approach. We are in that new era. And if you've been asleep for the last two years, you may not have noticed that. But we've been prophesying in the British Isles and in all over the world, the prophets have been prophesying that we are indeed 
in the new and we have to um, work with Holy Spirit in this new era. But the Lord is leading us in this new approach, which is really leading us in his ancient way, the way of the Lord for those who know God, his friends who walk with God, seeing and sensing all that is hidden as yet to many, but about to be revealed in the invisible spirit realms. God has given us not just to be forerunners, but the global corporate body of Christ is being given access to the residence of his glory light. The light that is life, the light that is in the sound of his voice and many waters that radiates around his throne in many colors, the brightness of the glory that transfigured Jesus and will radiate from you and from those who are alive in Christ at this time. For real, not just in the spirit realm. The realm of God's glory is open and access is available now to all of us in Christ Jesus. The way of access to the glory realm is open, just as we read in Acts 7, when Stephen saw the heavens open and the glory realm of God revealed as he was stoned to death. You remember that scripture well. So today, as the world is being shaken, as we see storms continue to come in increasing measure this year and beyond, we, the church, will be persecuted in ways that we've never imagined, both in the West and in other parts of the world, and verbally and physically stoned and wounded in the world. But in that, we will choose to fix our eyes on the glory of God and we will be bathed in the glory light of life, just as Stephen was, immersed and held there. And it is there that the Lord is saying to us that we must dwell. That becomes our habitation place. That becomes the place of our residing as those who are hidden in Christ. That we don't have to fight our way there. That we don't have to ask for a roadmap there. But already as those who Christ in us hope of glory... And those hidden in Christ, we have the full access. So may our prayer be, may my prayer and your prayer be the same as King David in this new era from Psalm 86, 11. Teach us your way, O Lord, and we will walk in your truth. Give us each and together an undivided heart that we might fear your name. And that's been a prayer of mine for some months and even into a, a, a couple of years now where the Lord just keeps bringing me around. Teach me your way, Lord, that I may walk in it. Show me your way, not man's way, not a historical way, but your ancient pathway. The way of the Lord to that which is currently unseen and hidden in the invisible and open to all of those who are in Christ. Yes, I believe all, just as all may prophesy, all have access to revelation in Christ. There is no exclusive elect group who get this or who have been marked for it. Yes, there are seers with capital S who are in the office of prophet like myself. But there are also those who see in the spirit who are not seers. Because access has already been given. The ancient doors have already been opened to us. And that which is unseen has been revealed. Seeing and sensing forerunners have moved through into the new realms of the unseen that are now open to all in Christ. And today it's our joy to teach take each of you together on the journey of discovery into the realms where the words of the 18th century explorer Captain Cook and James T. Kirk of the Starship Enterprise, who said, our mission is to explore strange new worlds, seek out new life, and to boldly go where no one has gone before. This requires boldness and courage, family, because it is unknown. But let me tell you, it's the greatest fun and greatest privilege that you will ever have. The way of the Lord is open. The ancient doors are open. And the sight and understanding of the Lord has been given. Some of us just haven't realized it yet and just haven't stepped into it yet. So in Jesus's own words, no eye has seen, no ear has heard, but blessed are your eyes and ears because they have seen and heard. Let's read it from Matthew 13, 16 together. If you've got your Bibles, you can open that up. 
where Jesus's disciples had questioned his use of parables. You'll remember that well. And rather than him speaking in plain speech, and, and Jesus explains that there were those who had eyes blinded and ears deafened so that they couldn't and didn't hear or understand. Verse 16. But blessed are your eyes because they see. Blessed are our eyes because they see. And your eyes and ears because they hear. For truly I tell you, many prophets and righteous people, Jesus said, long to see what you see, but did not see it. And to hear what you hear, but did not hear it. Matthew 13, 16. So to summarize, you and I, those of us in Christ, if you haven't been saved yet, talk to somebody uh, that, that has been um, in the room and get yourself saved. Because it's the most important thing you'll ever do. Through Jesus Christ to see and understand what others do not. To see as yet unseen. To hear as the yet unheard. And to know as the yet unknown. We have been given access to wisdom and understanding. Counsel and insight in and through Christ Jesus we've been given revelation now we've been given understanding and insight now we just need to apprehend it we are the Issachar generation and the Lord is pouring out a double portion anointing to those who represent Issachar in this day and stand in their anointing who were Issachar? Some of you will know. Issachar is the tribe that we read of in First Chronicles 12, who knew the times and seasons of God and crucially knew what to do with that insight for the sake of the nation. Scripture tells us they were mighty men of valor who were able to go forth into war and they rejoiced in their tents in their temporary dwellings, which is especially good news to those of us moving from building to building at this time. That's was in Glasgow. Crucially, they also brought great provision to the people of God. Issachar carried both the insight and timing of God anointing, and this is available to us all today as we engage in the Lord's way now open to us. Some of you are feeling on the page in agreement with me and going, yes, yes, I get what you're saying, Sarah Jane, and I'm with you. But some of you inside are saying, I get this and I've seen and I've had some understanding, but others of you are thinking, yeah, but why don't I know and why don't I understand? Why don't I see or sense in the unseen realms and have insight? Or why do I only see and understand a small portion? I ask a question to answer a question. Why is it that the word of God says it is his glory to hide or conceal a matter? But it is our glory as kings to search it out. Proverbs 25, 2. Why does God limit himself to first revealing something to his prophets before actually doing it? Amos 3. God has set the expectation in his word that we will see, know, and understand because he has given us the capability to do so. We are co-laborers in Christ, working with him together in the ways he works and worked when on the earth. We get to see what the father is doing and only do it like Jesus. But we hear this quite often. It doesn't just fall into our lap. On occasion, deep revelation and insight by the spirit comes in a moment like this, a flash of revelation and an aha, I totally get it, God. And the application hits us with the revelation, completely aligned. Almost like a, a pow or a, or a light switch going on. Praise God for those times. Enjoy those times. But let me tell you, the majority of the time we are learning to see and understand through the language of the spirit and the wisdom of God's spirit, which means we need to train our senses. In accordance with the scripture, Hebrews 5.14, we need to uh, focus our senses, focus our eyes, focus our ears, focus even our taste and our smell and our touch in, into the realms of the spirit and the ways of the spirit. This teaches us that we need to practice training our senses to discern and apply that discernment. 
Hebrews 5, 14. But solid food is for the mature who by what? Constant use have trained themselves to distinguish good from evil. They've trained themselves. So there's this sense from Hebrews 5.14 that we have a participation here, that we have a responsibility here, that we have um, not a false responsibility, but a sense of we accept the fact, God, that you've given us access. We accept the fact that we can have access to this unseen realm. And now with Paul's instruction, we focus our gaze upon it. And again, with Paul's instruction from Hebrews, we choose to train our senses. Most of us in Christ have forgotten, actually, that we are essentially spirit. We are hidden in Christ, Colossians 3, already and with Jesus Christ already in us, who is the hope of glory, us in Christ and him in the Father as one, John 17. We have complete unhindered access to the fullness of the spirit of Jesus as prophet Isaiah prophesied in Isaiah 11 1 there shall come forth a rod from the stem of Jesse and a branch shall grow out of his roots the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him the spirit of wisdom and understanding the spirit of counsel and might the spirit of knowledge and a fear of the Lord We've not yet fully understand the, the incredible access to the as yet unseen knowledge that we have, even those of us like me who've been practicing, seeing and sensing in the spirit for years, and we're still learning the unraveling of the great mystery of God that is what remains hidden yet to be revealed is greater than we have already seen, known and heard. Part of our problem continues to be, I believe, in the church on the earth generally, globally, not just in the British Isles, but specifically to the Western church, is that we are locked into this, we think, therefore we are. And we've given great uh, worship to the mind and thought. This is something that the French 17th century philosopher Descartes informed us in his principle his first principle, actually, je pense donc je suis, which is, I think, therefore I am in English. And if we think we exist and thought must be then placed in ultimate value above everything else, this idea developed further through the period of the Scottish Enlightenment into Europe in the 19th and 10th centuries and impacted the globe. So from Scotland, I apologize. We had a lot to do with this from the Enlightenment period. And we have a lot, actually, to say we got some things right, but we got a lot wrong. Where this stronghold of thought, of Greek mindset, has got so hold of the church in the West and from the church in the West that it's been exalted above anything else and in error and in sin over the spirit of God. So generally, we found ourselves as the people of God created in his image, tied to rational and human identity and reality with our singular focus as humans on human reasoning. And we've forgotten unintentionally or some intentionally to cut out God and his spirit. Some of us are nervous about Holy Spirit. Some of us think what is unknown and a bit ethereal to many, should be avoided. But if we read our Bible, the Holy Spirit and his actions and his movement is all the way through. And there is an invitation into it, into it with him, his unseen kingdom, creation, and the heavenly realms. Don't you think it's tragic that we've missed out on so much? Don't you think it's tragic that we have become a church who exalts thought above spiritual engagement. This value that's been placed on human thinking and man's enlightenment, so much more than listening and watching for God's wisdom and thought, his ways and thoughts that are not ours, but they are not unreachable. From our celebration of man-made thought, we have built and found ourselves as a church captive, often in the grave of our man-made structures. And yet, 
in his kindness, God is saying to us, the church today, come out from where your minds have held you captive into the liberation of the ways of my spirit and know, come out and see. Rational human thought must give way to spirit taught wisdom and spirit taught words from the Godhead, Yahweh. The three in one God is ready to take us into great understanding and insight by the spirit and of the spirit. If we are willing to be taken the way of the Lord, there are realms of heaven, angels and heavenly creatures interacting with us as they did with Ezekiel and Daniel. Please do read these books of the prophets again to refresh your spirits and expectations. There is access to revelation rooms and doors that open into greater insight into God and his ways, just as we read John the Beloved experienced in the book of Revelation. Please do read again the book of Revelation and understand the profound truths that came from encounters in the unseen realms from one who is intimate with the Lord. And it is that intimacy that gives us access to revelation. It is no, um, no kind of uh, mistake that we see John the one who leans into the Lord and who is the one who's closest to him, getting the most profound revelation. As you read the word of God, know that there are encounters with the word of God as we read scripture, they become openings and portals of access to tangible oneness with our Lord Jesus Christ and the ability to move away from reliance on what we know from human study and knowledge, leaping into the unknown as yet unseen and not experienced. Please hear me in this. I am not putting down the study of scripture, thought or teaching. What I am saying is let's not get stuck there and place value on that alone. Let's bring some right balance back in. Father, Son, Holy Spirit, not Father, Son, and, and remembrance um, and learning the word or learning man's theology, but actually understanding the realm of the spirit, the wisdom of the spirit, and the language of the spirit. So why don't we take another step together on the narrow path and choose to open ourselves up in mind, body and spirit to that which is currently unseen? If you want that, if you desire that, if you want to get out of that place of stuckness today, just put your hand on your heart. I just pray for you over Ephesians chapter one from verse 17 to 18 and 19. Lord, I pray for these dear ones watching and engaging right now. Lord, that you would enlighten their hearts. Holy Spirit, that the spirit of wisdom and revelation would come upon them and hover over them. Lord, that you would lift off them every restriction of their mind, every restriction of any Greek thinking or mindset of knowledge of man and learn, learned knowledge is higher than the knowledge of God by the Spirit. And if you feel that's you, and I'm feeling like Holy Spirit is saying, take a moment just to repent for that. If you feel like that's you, where you have exalted man's wisdom and knowledge above God's Spirit imparted knowledge, then I, I just invite you just to take a moment just to repent. Father, in the name of Jesus, I repent for where I have not given place to you, Holy Spirit. I repent where I have not made room for you to come with your spirit-taught knowledge and spirit-taught wisdom. And I make room in my mind. You might want to put your hand on your head. I make room in my mind. And I say, come and teach me the ways and the language and the wisdom of the spirit Come and teach me and lead me by enlightening my heart, Lord, that there would be an extension of the kingdom of God in me and through me as you reveal your ways and your hidden revelation to me. And what does Ephesians 1 say? Why we're asking for that and why Apostle Paul is praying that prayer? to know God more, 
not to have knowledge that's somehow unattainable by others and say in a puffed up way we have knowledge but to know God and his ways more and so Lord we say right now we are hungry to know your ways Lord we are hungry to follow the ancient paths of your ways that you opened up through Christ Jesus and we say Lord we take a step today onto that path onto that Psalm 86 way so that we may know you and may experience you and your ways more than we ever have before. We say we trust you, God. And if you can't pray that, Lord, help me trust you. Or I choose to trust you, even though I'm not sure I'm there yet. Lord, I choose to trust you and take a step on that narrow path, that way that is open. Holy Spirit, I pray for these dear ones right now. Lord, Holy Spirit, that you would hover over them, that you would uh, vibrate over them just as you did on the deep in Genesis 1, and that you would bring new life, new ways, defibrillation of senses, and an opening to the realm of the Spirit. I pray for eyes to be opened, spiritual senses to be awakened, of hearing, of taste, of smell, and of touch. I pray that the dimensions even of the spirit realms would be open to them in the way that you want them to be open. Holy Spirit, I pray that there would be an invasion of the church, even these ones now watching, into your wisdom, into your ways, and into your choice of revelation for them. So I pray protection over you all as you begin to be awakened and defibrillated, if you will, in your senses. And I'll explain that a little bit more in a minute. As you go on that journey of saying, yes, Lord, I am willing. Take me where you want to take me. I want to go where you want me to go. And I pray that protection, Lord, that there would be a boundary. In. We say nothing but the kingdom of God. Nothing other than what you want to reveal, nothing other than what you want to show them when you want to show them it. And we know that those revelations and those insights can come from dreams like Daniel, who had um, a vision in a dream and he was actually in the spirit, engaging, talking and um, communicating with those angels and beings in the realm of the spirit we know that we can get access there, but we also know that we can see and sense in the spirit realm from reading Ezekiel in the geographical place that we are, where things start to open up in the spirit. And again, you can pray a prayer, Lord, I am willing to be taught. I am willing to be an amateur in this, but be taught. And I am willing to be diligent in training my senses. Excuse me for one sec while I get a bit of water. <clears throat> you're doing good. I hope you're doing good. I'm going to keep going. <clears throat> so what did I mean when I was praying about the defibrillation of our senses? Well, you know what a defibrillation is? It's when somebody's heart stops and there is that paddle, the two paddles that are put on the body of the heart to Good you restart the heart. And I want to share um, a couple of testimonies of my own that you can read in the book, Seeing Beyond. But I am sharing them with you now. So give me grace, those of you that have read the book, to help illustrate the point of if we're willing to say, God, I'm putting myself out there and I'm saying yes to you, whatever it looks like, God will arrest you in a, at a moment's notice. So I was walking down the street one day, or in fact, up a hill in the street, in Buchanan Street in Glasgow. It's one of our busiest shopping streets. I was walking up the street and all of a sudden, I wasn't thinking anything spiritual. I think I was going shopping for a birthday present or something. And um, all of a sudden, everything before me, all the people walking towards me went in slow motion. And I started moving in slow motion like a movie and I began to see instantly in the spirit the clothes that people were wearing in the spirit and they had words on these raggedy clothes words like greed and lust and um, jealousy and fear and let me tell you as well as seeing those 
clothes, I could hear the spirits of those clothes making sounds and noises. And let me tell you, the loudest, most horrible noise was coming from the spirit of fear. And it's almost like a very high pitched squealy noise that seems to travel for miles and miles and miles. So if we ever thought that demons could read our thoughts, they don't have to. I don't believe they can, but um, they don't have to because they can see what we've partnered with as humans by what we're wearing in the spirit on our bodies. That was the first time God arrested and defibrillated my senses. It must have been for maybe like two minutes in the natural, but it felt like hours in the spirit where I just began to engage and watch and turn my head and look. And then all of a sudden, everything just went back to normal again. And I was shocked. And I didn't expect it to happen again. But one day I was walking through our busy central station in Glasgow and the same thing happened. Everything started to slow down and there was this flash of a defibrillation of my senses again. But this time I began to see inside people's bodies and it was almost like um, x-ray, x-ray vision. So I could see body parts and I could see um, areas of the body that God was drawing attention to. Like I'm bringing healing to this heart. I'm bringing healing and attention to these kidneys. Or this person has an anorexia. Or this person has a, has a disc problem in their back. And the Lord began to just say to me, look and see and engage in the spirit realm. And this is what I'm doing in these bodies. And so I was incredibly amazed at that. And this allowed me, and in the other circumstance that I just said earlier, this allowed me then to know that this is where I could look. I could engage my spiritual senses and I could begin to see in bodies when I was praying for healing. And I could begin to see on people what they partnered with in the spirit realm that wasn't Holy Spirit so that we could get people free and delivered. And so, and also watching in the spirit as those prayers are happening to see things lifted off them. The last one was an occasion uh, when I was walking down the street. Actually, my husband and I were in London. We were going to an evangelism meeting with Angus Bucken from South Africa. Um, and, uh, we were just chatting. We were going to dinner before, I think. We were just chatting away, arm in arm. And all of a sudden, this happened again. Gajun, my uh, spirit sight is open. I'm seeing all around me, on the back of people, these creatures like scorpions that look like scorpion backpacks. Really ugly, really unpleasant, and not nice at all. And these scorpion backpacks, the Lord began to show me, were where people had so partnered with the demonic that it had fused into their spine and it had become part of who they are. And there was that sense of what we wore in the spirit felt temporary, those clothes that I was telling you about earlier. But this was a whole other level of demonic partnership. And let me tell you, that was really gross. I actually felt really quite queasy after seeing that because they were really ugly and really unpleasant, just as you'd imagine what a scorpion demon like thing would look like as if it was fused into your spine and your shoulders like a backpack. Very unpleasant. And for months after that, actually short months, but some months after that, I became a little bit overwhelmed with seeing in the spirit, especially in, in church buildings when we would be ministering, all these demonic partnerships to the point where I thought, Lord, surely in the church, we're not so partnered with the demonic. But he was teaching me actually to see beyond the natural and to look beyond so that we could help people get free. Because there's no point seeing things and not do something about it, is there? Not that you're going around saying, hey, did you know you've got a, a partnership with a demon that's on your back right now? But actually, when people want to get free, you can help them get free because you have insight and discernment by the spirit of God into what is holding them back. And what they thought was a character issue or what they thought was just my life turns out to be a partnership with a demon. The point is advancing the kingdom of God. The point is not knowledge for knowledge's sake. The point is to see and know with the wisdom that God gives us to bring transformation and to advance his kingdom violently.
Amen. There has to be a, a holy righteousness that, that gets us when we start to see these things where sickness has taken hold of bodies, where the demonic has taken hold of bodies. And we're to say, no, not on my time, not in my watch. When God has equipped us as the church to bring deliverance, to bring healing, to release what needs released and to see it in the realm of the glory, to pull it into somebody's body and to bring healing and deliverance in that moment. Praying in the spirit takes on a whole new paradigm when you think about it in this context. Praying in the spirit is not praying in tongues. Praying in the spirit is engaging like this and actively uh, working with Holy Spirit on releasing people and regions and um, praying into even nations that have had control in the, in the spiritual strongmen. And so where do we start? Where do we begin? As the song says, where do we begin? Well, we begin at the beginning and we ask to see Jesus. Anybody can see in the spirit realm. Those who are partnered with Satan and witchcraft can see and engage in the spirit realm. And they do it with much greater ease probably than us in the church. But they do it in a dangerous way because why? They don't go through the gate of Jesus. We have access through Christ Jesus, which gives us access into the heavenly realms where God himself resides. And we can see in the spirit on the earth because we have access through the gate of Jesus Christ. Because he saw and engaged in the spirit and we are little Christ. Amen. So we have this access, but it shouldn't stop us from engaging with it just because the witchcraft community have been doing this for centuries um, and taken a lot of what we, the church, actually were given because the enemy can only copy what God has already created. He can only do what we, the church, the ecclesia, are supposed to inhabit and take hold of and apprehend. But we have been slow to apprehend this because we have been nervous because the witchcraft and the new age community have owned it for themselves. But no longer. The Lord is saying, this is my gift to you, victorious church, to be able to see and know what is going on in the spirit so that you can partner with me and displace darkness in any sphere, in your workplace, in your home, in your um context of your family whatever it is that is going on with you we get to have that divine insight through engaging in the spirit realm let me tell you a brief story my daughter sophie who's now 19 when she was seven uh she was having real difficulty at school and she hadn't told me quite how bad it was but she was being bullied by somebody at school and one day she just said mommy i don't want to go to school anymore and and explain the situation so I said to her, remember, Sophie, that because you love Jesus, the word of God tells us that people in the world either love our smell or hate it. And why is that? Because some of the spirits that they're partnered with in, inadvertently when they're not with Christ Jesus can make that happen. And so I said, let's ask Jesus to show you what's actually happening in the spirit realm. She's seven years old. So I get her a piece of paper and a pen and she draws these two demons and we and they look, you know, one of them's fat and round and has a, a funny face and the other one is tall and thin. So she draws them as Jesus is showing her these um, demonic spirits that are working with this person who's bullying her. And then I say, write down what the names are. Uh, or what, what is Jesus saying the names are? And actually one of them was intimidation, which at seven she struggled to spell. So I did help her with that. But you see that a seven-year-old was able to quickly with help see and engage in the spirit realm to see the actual thing that was coming against her. So the truth of Ephesians 6 that says we do not wrestle against flesh and blood has to apprehend us. We do not demonize people. We look past what is happening in the natural and we say, God, open my eyes. Let me see through Christ Jesus what it is that's coming against me right now. Or even Holy Spirit, maybe 
it may be a, a Holy Spirit timing issue on some things like job promotions or family breakthrough. Uh, but God will then give you strategy to hold that territory and he will give you grace to hold that space until breakthrough comes. We never left bereft. We're never left empty handed when we go to him with those requests and look and engage with what's going on in the spirit realm. So back to Sophie. So we pray about this um, and we say we bind the spirits of intimidation and um, whatever the other one was. I can't remember. We bind those spirits and we break agreement with them and we, we contain them in the name of Jesus. And we say, you may not hinder Sophie any longer. You may not interfere with her. You may not talk to her. You may not speak around her. You may not come near her. Do you know what? The next day I got a phone call from the head teacher who I, I hadn't spoken to. He said, Mrs. Bigger, I'm just calling to tell you that there has been some issues with um, somebody in your daughter's class who was causing issues for her. And we have removed that child and put them into another class. This happened within about 12 hours of Sophie and I praying and agreeing together that there would be a shift in the spirit. This is easy and this is real. It affects change, but we have to bother ourselves to look and we have to train our senses. And, and so I encourage you all not just to expect, because this is basic family. And if you're not getting the basics, then ask God for the basics. But if we're not getting visions with our eyes open, visions with our eyes closed, dreams when revelation comes, insight into hearing the voice of God for ourselves and having impressions in the spirit, if we're not operating in that already, which, which I would consider the basic foundations of being a prophetic church, we now need to apprehend that to another level to say we are a spirit-born church who has access to the spirit realms. And when Jesus said the kingdom of God is at hand, the spirit realm is right here. It's right next to you. It is wherever you are at any point. And there are realms of the spirit that are open. And, and there are riches of information and access of information that God himself wants to give you. And I would like to say to you, do some homework. And uh, because we don't have time to teach everything today. But read the book. And study 1 Corinthians chapter 2, which is very much about um, the, the unpacking of what it is to have eyes that see and ears that hear for this era, where we are taught from the Spirit of God as the Spirit searches all things. What does it say? It says, even the deep things of God, even the mystery of God, the spirit searches. And there is this invitation in this hour to the church where we get to deep dive into the hidden mysteries. But many of us would say, I don't know how to do that because we haven't even practiced the beginning part of the intimacy with Jesus and being used to seeing him and engaging with him. And so we're going to do an activation in a little while that will help you have some tools to be able to make this a lifestyle. I'm going to help you with that in a little while. Now, let's see where will we go now. Holy Spirit. Let's see. Okay, let's do that. Let's go and look at Ephesians 1 together. So you heard me pray that over you earlier on. As we read Ephesians 1 from uh, verse 3, let's read it just together. You can read it out loud where you are. All praise to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly realms because we are united with Christ. Even before he made the world, God loved us and chose us in Christ to be holy without fault in his eyes. Wow. God decided in advance to adopt us into his own family by bringing us to himself through Jesus Christ. This is what he wanted to do. And it gave him great pleasure. 
So we praise God for the glorious grace he has poured out on us who belong to his dear son. He is so rich in kindness and grace that he purchased our freedom with the blood of his son and forgave our sins. Hallelujah, Jesus. He has showered us his kindness on us along with all wisdom and understanding. Say all. All wisdom and understanding. Some of us are saying, I don't feel like he even have that much. But he says, all wisdom and understanding. God has now revealed to us his mysterious will regarding Christ, which is to fulfill his own good plan. And this is the plan. Say, this is the plan. <laughs> At the right time, he will bring everything together under the authority of Christ, everything in heaven and on earth. Furthermore, because we are united with Christ, we have received an inheritance from God. For he chose us in advance and he makes everything work out according to his plan. Isn't the word of God amazing? Because of this, since I first heard about your strong faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and your tender love toward all his devoted ones, my heart is always full and overflowing with thanks to God for you as I constantly remember you in my prayers. I pray that the Father of glory, the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, would impart to you the riches of the spirit of wisdom and the spirit of revelation to know him through your deepening intimacy with him. I pray that the light of God will illuminate the eyes of your imagination, flooding you with light until you experience the full revelation of the hope of his calling. That is the wealth of one's God's glorious inheritances that he finds in us, his holy ones. Wow. Is that not incredible that there is something in us, his holy ones, that is going to be unlocked when we receive the impartation of the riches of the spirit of wisdom and revelation? Do you see that? That what God is revealing to us and what Paul's letter summarizes to us, that we all are already blessed with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly realms because we are united with Christ. We don't have to wrestle or contend for it. We just simply acknowledge it's ours and thank God and step into it. We were chosen to be holy before the creation of the world that is seen as tangible matter. The plan is to bring everything under Christ's authority in the earth that is seen in heaven, unseen at the time that he says is right. And there is great illumination available to us, bringing the fullness of revelation. The Apostle Paul prays for what they in Ephesus and what we need today, in addition to their tender love toward each other and their strong faith. I hope you have already strong love and strong faith for each other. He prays for the spirit of wisdom and the spirit of revelation to know Christ more through our deepening intimacy with him. So key that we and they would be illuminated in the eyes of our hearts, flooded with light flooded with wisdom and revelation until we experience the fullness of revelation of our calling that is the wealth of glory already in us. So these three things, the spirit of wisdom, the spirit of revelation, an enlightened, illuminated heart and imagination. I'll say that again if you're taking notes. The spirit of wisdom, the spirit of revelation, number two, and enlightened, illuminated heart and imagination. There are keys to know everything of the riches and powers available to us to, to know God more. So let's make that our prayer. God, I desire to know you more. Spirit of wisdom and revelation, help me so that I may know God more. If we go to the place where we're saying, God, I want to know more, we err into Gnosticism. And that is the elevation of knowledge and spiritual engagement for the sake of knowledge. This is about knowing our God more and his ways, not about knowing more and puffing ourselves up. And I spent years praying, open the eyes of my heart, Lord, that I would see you and know you more. Spirit of wisdom and revelation, come that I would know God more deeply and more intimately. 
And isn't that what King Solomon asked for, an enlightened heart so that he would have wisdom? He didn't ask for wealth or fame or riches. He didn't even ask for knowledge. He asked for wisdom. Yet on top of that, God granted him his request and added to him the wealth, the robes, the riches and great fame in the nations of the world. We often have not because we ask not. So let's be those who ask. Lord, I ask for wisdom and revelation to see and know you more. I come into expectation that you will enlighten and illuminate my heart and imagination to see and know you more. Psalm 27, 8 says, my heart says of you, seek his face. Your face, Lord, will I seek. Make that a declaration over your life every day if you have to. Stick it on your fridge, stick it on your mirror. I will seek your face. Matthew 6, 33 says, seek first the kingdom and all these things will be added to you. Remember, the all things that are being added are all the worries. When we seek first the kingdom and we stop focusing on ourselves, the things that need sorted in our own lives are taken care of. I can say that with wholeheartedness, and I'm sure many of you have testimonies where you have done that and sought first, God, what is on your heart? What is on the kingdom agenda for today? Not, this is on my personal agenda, and can we fix this first, please? When we fix our eyes and our timing and our attention on what is on heaven's agenda, then we personally get breakthrough. So it all starts with Jesus, and it all focuses on him and his kingdom first. When we begin with our gaze on him, seeking his face, our attention on him, we will stay the course and we will never go awry, family. Those who choose to use their spiritual sight to go demon hunting, spirit realm adventures for the sake of it, or ascension into the spirit without purpose and separate from prime Jesus consciousness and knowing Jesus and his ways as a primary motive will be easily overrun by darkness and sent off course. Let me give that as a stark warning to any of you who are not putting that intimacy with Jesus first. And I can tell you many cautionary tales of those who would be called seers determined not to submit their gaze to Jesus fully and rather be transfixed by the hidden realms and follow them. And we know that Lucifer comes to deceive as the angel of light and that he will even deceive the elect. So it is imperative for these warnings alone that we always start, continue and finish with Jesus Christ, that he is the center focus. He is the way through. He is the door. He is the gate. And there is no other access. Now, some of you may have things in your generational line where perhaps some family members would have been involved in the occult, maybe mediumship, maybe spiritualism, maybe witchcraft, and maybe even yourself before you got saved, you might have dabbled in some of these things knowingly or unknowingly and unintentionally. And you may need help closing uh, what, what would be called the third eye, which is how uh, the, the occultic access to the spirit realm is gained. It's, they see from here rather than from the heart of Ephesians 1. And so you may want to close that. And if that feels like you and you're feeling a stirring from Holy Spirit, then please do read through chapter five of my book because I take you through every level of possible interference from um, seeing and engaging in the spirit realm, uh, such as fear or generational curses or things on your property or in your property where you live um, that you could be um, helping yourself get rid of uh, by Holy Spirit's help to give you clarity. So in this this angel of light, you know, I have to say when Lucifer uh disguises himself as the angel of light i've had many occasions uh where and conversations with people who've come from ministry who believe that they've had an angel and actually as we begin to pray illumination they realize that that angel is actually a demon quite often it's a familial demon who's been following their family lines um for quite some time 
And so we need discernment. We need the gifts of the spirit. We need the revelatory gifts as a package. Go to uh, 1 Corinthians 12, 13, 14. Read that through again. You know, there's only a, a short space to teach you today. But I encourage you to, to read these scriptures and understand that the way of love applied to the revelatory gifts means that we get freedom and we get access to the fullness of of revelation that God wants to give us. And so the discerning of spirits is such a key gift in this time so that we can be aware of the enemy schemes and know if it's demonic spirit, human spirit, or Holy Spirit. Um, and again, I, I talk a little bit about that in Seeing Beyond. So we know that we, you know, we've had cautionary tales myself, but some of you may know some testimonies, but you can read in Acts 16 about the servant girl who gets very accurate um, information and revelation from the spirit realm, but she gets it through the spirit of divination. And Paul uh, knows, actually, that she is getting it from that and tells her to be quiet. Do you remember that? And then there is that dealing in Ephesus with the, um, the spirit of, of divination that comes from the idol worship. Um, so let us be those who are wise and who have that ability to say, hang on a minute, something's not right here. Something feels off. Lord, open my eyes, open my spiritual senses and show me what's actually going on. I remember Sophie when she was seven. It is easy for us because we are spirit first. Intimacy is key. Matthew 7, 21. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my father in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name, cast out demons in your name and done many wonders in your name? And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. So let's ensure Jesus knows us from our determination to spend time with him and sit with him above everything else, that we're not looking to gain knowledge, to puff ourselves up, but we are looking to know him more. Let's take a moment to pray. Just close your eyes for me wherever you are. I want you just to ask this question in your heart and you can do it internally. Have I ever gone off course, Lord? Do I need a reset? I'm sorry and repent for where I've not looked at you or looked for you first, Jesus. I'm sorry where I've looked for information, for knowledge first, or where I've looked for encounter first before gazing and looking for you. I'm sorry, Lord, where I've not been conscious of you. Jesus, I want to know you again, and I want to know you more. I choose you, Jesus. I choose you. And why don't you just listen for a moment? I'm just going to give you a minute just to listen quietly to what Jesus is speaking to you. And receive his invitation. Let's just have quiet and, and I'm, I'm not going to talk for a little while just to let you hear and see what's going on.
Lord, we're asking for a reset. Lord Jesus, we're asking that you would enable us and help us to be a Christ-centered church, not in some fake Jesus way where we see you, but we don't really know you. Lord Jesus, we're asking that you would reveal your godliness to us, that you would reveal your even your, your humanness, Lord, to us as you were both so fully human and so fully God. Lord, that Jesus, we would understand you in ways that we have never understood you before. Lord Jesus, we want to see your face. Lord Jesus, we want to smell your breath that is like apples. We want to um, feel your touch and we want to, Lord, know you more. And so, Lord, we're asking right now as we pray today, Lord, that there would be a reset even in our hunger even in our desire um, and yearning, even now, Lord, that we would have a fresh yearning and hunger and desire for more of you to engage and to see you rightly. And so even as you have your eyes closed, I pray even now that you begin to see and encounter Jesus and be aware of him in proximity to you wherever you are, whether you're in the room in the church or whether you're at home, that you would begin to see and be aware of him. Some of you will feel him. Some of you will just have a sense of, oh, Jesus feels like he's in the corner of my room or he feels like he's sitting next to me or he feels like he's standing in front of me. Some of you will be very much aware of seeing him and and sensing him fully. So I just want you to be aware of his presence. And just, again, I'm going to be quiet for a minute. Just tune yourself in. Remember, you can't think your way into revelation. You can't think your way into the spirit realm. You are already in Christ. So if you're struggling with that, just pray over yourself. Thank you, Jesus, that I'm in you and you're in me. And take a deep breath. Thank you that I'm already in you and you're in me. Now, Jesus, would you reveal yourself to me? So as you begin to um, acclimatize yourself to the presence of Jesus, just ask him, Jesus, what would you like to to say to me? Now, some of you will be finding this really easy and you'll already be hearing him speak to you. What I encourage you to do is to listen and watch. And then if you feel able to, to and you want to, you could write down what you're hearing him say. But if you prefer just to to watch and listen and fully engage, then please do that. If Jesus feels like he's far away from you, then invite him to come closer if you're comfortable with that. And you're asking him, Lord, what would you like to say to me? Or what would you like to show me? You might want to do both. And again, I'm just going to be quiet while you have a conversation with Jesus. Don't be afraid to talk to him.
and you can begin to ask Jesus questions like, Jesus, is this something you'd like to give me? Is this something that I need to give you? Is this something that I need to release to you? And just begin again to talk to him and have that conversation. And he will impress upon you. Some of you will feel an impression of, I feel like I need to give this memory or I need to give this um, pain that I have or this person that's come to mind and just speak that I, I give you this person, I give you this um, memory, whatever it might be. You're not going into the memory, you're just giving it to Jesus. And that sense of actually having those conversations with him, but receiving what Jesus wants to give to you as well. It will be very bespoke and personal to you. And actually some of you may see it very clearly, like full color, like a movie and others will just feel it. And that's okay. Everybody's on a different reception um, journey. So go with that and just talk to Jesus some more. If we just ask the question, Jesus, what else do I need to know right now? Jesus, what else do I need to know right now? And if you can just come back in to kind of open your eyes, come out of that space um, that you're with Jesus. And if you want to take a minute just to write down anything while it's fresh in your memory, please do that. I'll just give you one minute just to, to write down anything that you want to. Some of you will have gone very deep into that encounter with Jesus and that again is very normal for some not so normal for others and it doesn't make it right or wrong on how you encountered him today Great. So I'm just going to share a little bit more with you on the back of that. Um, and then I'll bring things to a close and then Suze can decide whether we're doing Q&A or, or anything else. But I really felt um, 
important to say that some of you will have had an encounter there where you're feeling like you're hearing the still small voice of the Lord. And that is perfectly acceptable and perfectly normal. And on another end of the spectrum, some of you will have been having like being in a movie where you're seeing and sensing everything with smell, taste, touch, hearing and sight fully loaded. And, you know, everybody's experience is different. Um, But we can all practice training our senses in that. Um, there is always more to see. There is always more to hear. There is always more to discern with the Lord when we meet with him in the secret place. And chapter 10, uh, I think it is the secret garden in seeing beyond the book that I've written explains a little bit more about the importance of cultivating that secret place with Jesus, because it's in that secret place that life comes. It's in that secret hidden place, that that hidden room, that timio, as Jesus called it, where we come and we lock ourselves inside with the Lord in whom we are already in and in whom he is already in us, Christ and us, the hope of glory. And I love that there is this relational reality that the word of God encourages us in. But for many of us who've been locked in thought and locked in cerebral, um, what's the word, outworking of scripture, we've missed it for so long. And so if this is new to you, bless you on that journey. If this is something that is uh, familiar to you, wonderful, keep doing it. If this is something where you feel like I've started, but I'm encouraged to go deeper, then may I say there is a new depth for us all. And for me, who's been teaching and training on this for quite some time, and I don't claim to know everything, but I know that the Lord has given me a gift to be able to equip and release the church in this area, along with others, that there is that sense of even to me, when I've been engaged in the spirit realm fairly recently and struggling with some of the things the Lord has been showing me, he has instructed me, Sarah Jane, train your senses. And as I relaxed and into the spirit more and more, then I was able to receive the revelation that I needed to receive. So I think even when we get familiar, which I would say I probably had become There are uh, instructions from the Lord of resting in the spirit and engaging our senses in a way that we have never done before. So even if you feel like you're a veteran in this, there is a renewed training of senses in the spirit that the Lord is asking us to do. So I just want to share another testimony with you. um, And I think the importance of learning to come into that place of watching, waiting, and resting with Jesus and being open to Holy Spirit's leading. Some years ago, I was at a a healing school training event. And the senior minister pulled me aside and he said, I've got a word for you. And I wasn't very used to prophetic words at the time. This was in um, early 2009. And he said to me, um, the Lord is showing me uh, that there is an invitation to rest. He's giving you permission to rest. And as he prayed for me I began to see in the spirit a tree like a mighty oak tree and very weirdly like an English scene a rolling countryside and hillsides somewhere you know um, in the Cotswolds or something very beautiful with Jesus sitting under that tree with a very traditional kind of red and white picnic blanket speaking I believe of the holiness of the white and the red of his blood that was going to bring healing to me. And he said to me, as this word was released, God is giving you permission to rest. He said, come and sit with me. And it was just in that moment in the spirit that I came and sat with him and looked at the view with him. And it was just being with Jesus and laying my head on his shoulder that brought transformation to me. Because you see, I had been in such a 
a very difficult time. Myself and my family had lost somebody very dear to us. It was my um, my husband's goddaughter who was age seven. Her goddaughter, not a daughter, goddaughter. And it was a family who had grown up with us. And the the girl, um, she had uh, been born three weeks before our son, who is now 20. And we had had a terrible time processing a horrific grief. She had a very traumatic accident and she was um, alive for a few days and then uh, pronounced brain dead. And throughout that experience, the Lord showed me, even when I was waiting at hospital with the parents and praying, he showed me in the spirit what I didn't really want to see. He showed me that I felt what he was showing me was that she was dead, but being kept alive by intubation. And I shared this with a friend and I said, my greatest fear is that she's actually not alive. We think she is, but she's just being kept alive. And the scripture that the Lord gave me was, um, let the children come to me. And I was devastated. I was like, surely, Lord, you can't really mean this. Surely you can't actually really mean that you're taking a seven-year-old from her family in this horrific accident that happened today and that I'm supposed to be okay with that. And these were the wrestles that I was having in my head and I wasn't sharing it with the parents who were close friends at the time because of obvious reasons. Their daughter was in a hours and hours of surgery. And so we prayed and we prayed and we prayed, but still in the back of my mind was this vision and this word that God had given me on that fateful night. And five days later, the doctors uh, told the parents, we're going to have to switch off her life support because she's brain dead. So what God had shown me became true. And I was really devastated. I thought, Lord, I don't want to see anything again in the spirit. I don't want you to tell me anything again, if it's as hard as that, because what am I supposed to do when things go horribly wrong like that? And I felt like David in Psalm 88, completely cut off from my friends and family in this funny sort of bubble in the spirit of isolation where I couldn't pray. I I didn't know what to pray. I didn't know how to behave because we were locked in such grief for this family that were like our auntie and sister and brother, kind of um, non, you know, non blood relatives, but very close family friends. It was a terrible time. And then Jesus gave me this invitation. And let me tell you, this invitation came, I think it was about two and a half months or something like that after the accident. And there was an invitation into rest, watching with Jesus, waiting with him, sitting with him. I would walk the dogs and I would talk to Jesus in a way that I hadn't before. I engaged in relationship with him like I hadn't before. Now I knew Jesus and I, and I loved Jesus and I'd been talking to Jesus, but this was another level of depth of relationship and encounter that he had for me. And some of those principles of rest, some of those principles of being able to sit in with Jesus and engage with him in a level that feels very natural, isn't always easy to find. And I think we need to go to Song of Songs and acknowledge that there are times when Jesus is very tangibly there with us in the room. And then there are those times when he's saying, follow me out into the wilderness and chase after me. And then there are other times when he's on the other side of the lattice and we can see him in part and he's saying, come and meet with me there. And let's have a conversation. There are moments in our lives when we engage with Jesus in different ways, just like the beloved and the lover in the Song of Songs. But there is the strong love of Song of Songs 8, the strong love of uh, chapter 8, verse 6, where the cry is, set me as a seal upon your heart, as a seal upon your arm, for love is as strong as death. Jealousy as cruel as the grave. Its flames are flames of fire, 
a most vehement flame. Many waters cannot quench love, nor can the floods drown it. And so wherever you are on that journey with Jesus, whether you feel like he's so close, skin to skin, that testimony that I give in chapter one of the book where I felt Jesus kiss me on the cheek, marked me, changed me forever. You will have these encounters that are personal to you with Jesus. If you haven't had them yet, you will have them. But some of the time we are chasing him to meet with him. Sometimes we have to go out and be the one who starts the chase. And then other times he comes and meets with us. So know the season that you are in. Know the time of your life that you're in. Know where you are in that Song of Songs journey so that you can meet with Jesus wherever he is and go to him or let him come to you. Let him bring his healing. Let him bring that release and that freedom that only he can bring. And let him then take you on a journey of exploration of the realms of the spirit to inhabit as citizens of heaven that which he has already given us access to. The knowledge of Christ, the wisdom of Holy Spirit that is something that he wants to impart to the church so that we can be the seeing, sensing, victorious church for this era. It's such a joy. It's such a delight. But let's not forget it is for a purpose of advancing the kingdom of God. Does it make us feel good? Does it make us feel liberation? Does it make us feel more of the love of God in us and through us? Absolutely, 100%. Does it empower us by the spirit of God? Absolutely, 100%. But it's not all about us. It's about being transformed through meeting with Jesus so that we can see the kingdom of God released, advanced violently, and displace darkness. This is a journey that is for our lives if we are willing. <laughs> this is a journey where we get to be the adventurers individually and together if we're willing. And I feel like that is the challenge. And if I had the music right now, I would want to play the Mission Impossible music. This is the challenge, church if we choose to accept it. Do you accept the challenge and are you willing? Amen. Over to you, Suze. I just saw in the spirit traffic light that was right, right in front of us. And as you were praying Ephesians 1, and I was asking, Lord, what are, why am I seeing traffic light? What does that mean? And he said, the spirit of control. And, if, uh, and as you were praying, um, Sarah Jane over us, Ephesians 1, that traffic light started to get smaller and smaller and smaller until it disappeared of sight. Wow. And I felt you dealt with spirit of control, spirit of religion, spirit of witchcraft, just by praying Ephesians Amen. 1 over us. Wow. Hallelujah. Wonderful. Hallelujah. And then right at the end, I saw the race, race flags as in Formula 1. And I just saw the Lord saying, right, now is the time. And then at the end, you were just saying, the Lord starts the chase, but we go after the Lord. And so as you were leading us through the activations, the Lord was saying, okay, the race. Let's start the race. And it's the race in the spirit. Let's go and seek the Lord. We come after you, Jesus. Thank you for just saying green light. We race. We race. We begin the race in Jesus' mighty name. But we're not going to let you go. You stay there, Sarah Jane. Because no problem. We are going to do the Q&A because I'm sure there might be some questions. Sure. Before we do that, before we do that, uh, you will see this on your tables, a um, little piece of paper. There should be one online as well on Zoom. This is for you to bless our special guest, Sarah Jane, um, 
just with an offering. Just give as you would give unto the Lord. She's blessed, released, pushed us in the spirit. So just use that. There is a scan me, a gift app. There is PayPal scan me. Um, uh, Charmaine has beautifully prepared for us. We bless you, Charmaine. Uh, so for those online, if you just take the moment to do that, just give, give now and all the money would go into uh, to bless Sarah Jane and the ministry she's doing. And you're actually not just giving to Sarah Jane, you're giving towards the work of the Holy Spirit and what she's pushing out there. So we just ask you that you would do that now. Just bless as you're blessing the Lord, as you're giving on to the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Can we just take a couple of minutes to do that? Uh, if we can have the piano maybe playing in the background. Just let the Lord just drop an amount in your mind. Just drop an amount in your heart and just do that. Sorry, just Susie. How, would you, how do you Let's do that for the people that. online? Thank you, Jesus. Sorry, what did you say about the people online, Susie? And if those of you want to give by cash, there is a ball right at the back. So just drop cash right at that ball at the back. Um, or we'll take it around. Can somebody take the ball around? You could commit to give. You might not be able to give now. You can commit to give and we'll, we'll, we'll do that. Uh, we'll keep that offering for you uh, as a promise offering. And then you can give when you're ready. And we'll pass it on to Sarah Jane. Bless you as you have given, may give unto you. Press down, shaken to go together, running over. Hallelujah. Okay, so how are we going to do the QA? Uh, for those of you who have a question on Zoom, you can drop the question in the chat and Sarah Jane can uh, answer that uh, or specify who's the question for. I guess it'll be good if it's for Sarah Jane. Any questions to me, come and see me afterwards. <laughs> Let's use this time we have with Sarah Jane. And for those of you who are here, uh, you could raise your hand and I'll bring the mic over to you. Let's do that. So do we have any questions on Zoom or uh, in the room? Question about what was thought, question about you felt, question about seeing Jesus, seeing in the spirit. You have a question? Coming there. Cheryl. Hello, Sarah Jane. Uh, thank you so much for just being so open and sharing so much. It's so powerful. Thank you. Um, you talked about your, your daughter and the age she was talking about seeing things in the spirit. I have a toddler who's very sensitive. And she mm. loves being in church and I can see she's 
she's already very aware and, and she notices, I think she notices when people are carrying things but she can't verbally say them. Um, I think she dreams a lot at night time and we, we pray with her and we talk to her about Jesus being with her. How, how do you start de developing that language with children that young? Because I, I'm aware that she is already quite aware even though she's only two. Mm. Um, how did you start that? Yeah, it's a good question, Cheryl, because I think what we're finding as we travel um, in different nations, even that the children are uh, born into this um, more than we experienced, you know, even like 10 years ago. So we're finding that a lot like your daughter um, who are babies and toddlers who are engaging in the spirit realm without realizing it. Now, this can be, as you're saying, like they, they're just aware and, and they're seeing and sensing things, but don't know how to process it. Um, they're having dreams or they're having visions. Um, I remember my daughter telling me once, she was about five. She's like, mommy, last night the angels were in my room playing duck, duck, goose with me. And then they <laughs> took me. This is like, really? And like, then they took me into um, this, this city. And she started to describe the heavenly city that we read about in Revelation 21. It was mental. And I was like, Lord, what are you doing with my daughter? And like, she's seeing things that I've not even seen. But it's that sense of the ease of access. You know, when Jesus says the kingdom of heaven belongs to such as these, those who are childlike, that they have such an ease to it. So I think as parents, as those even in church, we make it easier for them by giving them room to talk about their experiences um, by, as you say, asking them in the morning, like with Sophie, it would be like every every morning she'd be dreaming. So I'd be like, what was your dream about last night, honey? And then when she got a bit older, she got a bit lazy. So um, then it was for a while, she'd be like, oh, mommy, you tell me what it means. And I'm like, no, you need to ask the Lord, you know, let's do some business together. Um, and I so when they get a bit older, then you're buying, you know, get them a dream journal where they can write down and have a, have a dream journal uh, for you and then for their use when they get a bit older. But I think it helps us to see um, and help them understand what it is the Lord is saying to them. And if we give them language and actually normalize it, they don't feel weird or strange. And so I don't know if anybody's got any kids who've had an imaginary friend. Apparently I had one when I was younger. My mom was talking about this a while ago. And um, I've got feedback in my ear. I'm just going to turn that down. Um, she... Uh, um, I, I, sorry, I had an imaginary friend and uh, I was hearing from another person that their daughter, who's a really full on seer, when she was about, I think they said she was about five or four, she had an imaginary friend. And then her dad, who's a seer, suddenly said, oh, hang on. When I went past her room, I saw she was talking to somebody and engaging with somebody. God opened my eyes so I could see this imaginary friend. And it turned out to be a demonic spirit dressed as a princess befriending the daughter. So, you know, we don't, you know, we need to be aware of that um, and to double check, which is why we need to be parents who can see and engage in the spirit as much as our kids do. So that when things like that happen, we can say, actually, we can pray nothing but the kingdom of God and it disappears. I remember we went to a holiday house when the kids were younger and my son, uh, Thomas, who's 20, he was probably about five at the time. And he's like, I don't want to go in that house. There's giant rabbits on the house. And I was like, giant rabbits. He said, yeah, look at them all. Look at them all. And I'm like, OK, so I engage my spiritual senses because I'm aware that we, you know, that we can see and sense in the spirit. And then um, I prayed and so I'm teaching, I'm demonstrating, and I'm saying, you know, we are coming into that house and we say to anything that is not of the kingdom of God, you now need to leave. This is our house in the name of Jesus Christ. And we will be in it from this day until that day. And while we're in it from, you know, giving dates, while we're in this house, you may not interfere with us and you may not um be anywhere on the property and so he's then he's, he's getting excited he's going mom they're leaving the giant rabbits are leaving and I said of course they're leaving son because we're praying prayers of shift and I said do you see how easy that is 
So then we go into the house and he's they're going into their bedroom, him and Sophie are getting excited because you know what kids are like when they're on holiday and they're like running around, seeing all the houses and they're in the bedroom. And then they're coming out going, I don't want to go in that room because there's a funny man in the corner. And I'm like, OK, let's go have a look. So we're standing at the door and I'm like, who is that funny man? And, uh, you know, we did again something is, is demonic, you know, is demonic. And so um, I say to him what I did for the giant rabbits. Now you do. So he prayed very, a little bit, you know, a little bit tentatively in the name of Jesus. I say, you cannot stay in this house, get out of our house. And he's, he and his sister are then like jumping up and down. It's going, he's going, you know, they, and they really, they really see that easily. And I say, Emma Stark, who I work with, who some of you probably know, and she and I once had to go on a prayer assignment in the summer holidays because God had us pray some things, um, when was that? That was uh, maybe like 2013 or something when the kids again were young. And you know what it's like in the summer holidays, you've got broods of children. We only, we didn't only have our own five between us, but we had somebody else's as well. And we went to the transport museum and then to the river Clyde to pray some things and got the kids engaged with it all. And they're jumping up and down. I see the angels and they're blowing their trumpets, you know, and these guys haven't read all the scriptures that we have, but they're loving it all. And so I think at age two, you can start bringing the language in and you can continue that and engage them in the spirit um, by having those conversations and making it normal. It's a lot easier when you as mom sees or dad sees um, because you can then engage with what they're seeing. But if you're not seeing what they're seeing, you can say, tell me what you're seeing. Tell me what they're saying and give them some tools and, and get them to talk about their dreams. I hope that's helpful. That seems like a long answer, but I hope that helps. I think Cheryl's putting a thumbs up. <clears throat> there is on the chat. Okay, let's read the question in the chat. Okay, we have Sarah Jane. God bless you for what. Uh, he's doing in your life. My question is, I'm very new in engaging in the spirit. Sometimes I feel like I'm sensing mm. in the spirit, but how can I distinguish between the Holy Spirit, me or the enemy? Yeah, that's helpful. I think, um, good question. I think we're going back to the discerning of spirits and learning how to discern. And we need to know what God's voice sounds like. We need to know what our own voice sounds like, and we need to know what the enemy sounds like. Some activations for that is actually asking the Lord and saying, Holy Spirit, will you allow me to hear your voice and paying attention to what it sounds like, what he's saying and how he's saying it. And for some of us who see and sense in the spirit, we're also aware of the direction it comes. So around your body, sometimes you're aware of where the voice is speaking. So for example, you might hear the demonic outside of your head talking at you. You might hear your own voice coming from inside your head and you might hear Holy Spirit coming from inside the core of your body. Those are just examples because it's different for everybody. But some people who see and sense in the spirit can actually feel it as well as hear it. But I think by practicing listening to God's voice, we get to know God's voice, just like you get to know your dear friend's voice or your husband or your wife's voice. When they pick up the phone, they don't need to announce who they are, do they? You just know who they are because you've listened to the voice for so long. And. Um, I would do that by practicing listening to God's voice daily, if that's not something that you're used to. Get some paper and a pen and say, Holy Spirit, what is it that you're saying to me? Jesus, what are you saying to me? Father, what are you saying to me today? Whoever you feel you need to hear from of the Godhead that day. And just write that down, what you're hearing. We always encourage people to do this uh, uh, and not read back what god is saying to you until you finish writing until you feel like that's all he's saying and for me in the early days god would really help me out by by saying the end so that i knew it was the end of that 
download and I would write the end. So, <laughs> so he will give you um, some top tips as well for how to hear his voice. So I encourage you to do that. Listen, that is the highest revelation is hearing God for ourselves. And we always encourage that. Hear God for yourself so that you get to know his voice really intimately so that when he does speak, when you're out and about, about doing normal life, that you're like arrested in that moment and go, I recognize that voice. I know that's God. And I'm going to listen to that voice. Amen. So I encourage you to do that diligently. We should never stop doing that. But if that's new to you, I encourage that as a, as a daily discipline to hear what God is saying for yourself, because we can't prophesy well, and we can't release revelation to other people. Well, if we're not hearing for ourselves, and this will be something that Susie will have heard us teach on, um, I'm sure as well in EPs, where if you don't practice listening uh, to God's voice for yourself, you will hear a word for you when you're trying to hear a word for somebody else. So it's really important because sometimes you can end up prophesying words that are self words, words that God is speaking to you rather than for the person that's in front of you. And you avoid that by listening to God for yourself on a regular basis. So that's the first thing. Get to know God's voice. The other thing is. The when you're hearing the demonic, what do we know about the demonic and what do we know about Holy Spirit? Holy Spirit comes to convict Holy Spirit does not come to condemn. Nine times out of 10, our own voice, our human spirit, is either talking us down or being self-critical or, or mostly not being positive or the other end of the scale, being prideful and arrogant and thinking that everything we ask God for, he's going to say yes to. The other thing is the demonic sounds, the voice of the demonic sounds very condemnationary, if that's a word. He, he basically makes us feel bad about ourselves. But again, ask Holy Spirit, can I hear my, what my own voice sounds like? And can I hear what the enemy's voice sounds like? And, and you will begin to realize. And clearly, when Jesus was tempted in the desert, the enemy came with the word of God slightly differently than it is actually written. And so we do need to be those who are alert and, and wise to the ways of the enemy. And also, as I was sharing before, he comes disguised as an angel of light. So this is when we need to pray prayers like, if we're seeing in the spirit, nothing but the kingdom of God is allowed to appear before me. And um, nothing but the kingdom of God is allowed to engage with me. And I choose and I will not engage with anything other than what is from the kingdom of God. So these are some of those ring fencing prayers that we can pray before we start to engage and listen and watch in the spirit. I hope that's helpful. But I think it's really by practice um, of hearing God's voice for ourselves that we really get to know God's voice and being aware of the self tape talk. Apparently, uh, all the people that have done the psychological studies say that we talk to ourselves in our heads thousands of times a minute. And probably most of that is not very positive or uplifting. So actually asking Holy Spirit to divide and discern that which is human spirit so that we can be aware of it and stop it and bring our thoughts under submission to Christ, where Paul, you know, Paul says, um, bring your thoughts into captivity um, through Holy Spirit. There's that sense of we get free from those self-tape thoughts that can drag us down. So I think be aware of them and learn to discern. Ask God for that uh, discernment of spirit's gift and practice in the Hebrews 514 way that I was talking about earlier. I hope that's helpful. helpful very in depth i think what we we might be able to release this youtube video afterwards as well so uh i think you, should, you guys should take notes that was really helpful um next question is uh from google on zoom it says almost exactly a year ago i started to smell a smoky aroma 
At first, I thought it was my neighbors burning incense, mm -hmm. and after some time, realized that it was not, as I would smell it in random places away from home, and no mm -hmm. one else could smell it. I still smell it on occasions, but I'm still confused as to what the smell is. I understand that it is spiritual, but it's not of God. I have prayed and asked, but still I'm not clear on the answer. Uh, she's understanding it's spiritual, but it is of God. Oh, yeah, okay, it is, is of God. Yeah, I prayed and asked, but I'm still not clear on the answer. Okay, as you train the senses, you will begin to have odd smells. And I'm just thinking of a um, an occasion when somebody I was mentoring in this in in our context in Glasgow um, was at work one night and she told this this story the next morning that she'd been smelling rotten fish and she spent all night going oh my goodness can you smell that it's disgusting and everybody thinking she was crazy because they couldn't smell it at all by discernment and with some help from me. It was very clear that it was the spirit of death in her workplace uh, that God revealed was actually being activated and she could smell it. So she basically was given then as we prayed together and uh, almost like this smell had been a signpost to something. We prayed together and were able to get strategy for how to pray when she went back into the workplace. And that smell then lifted and she saw things in the spirit where she felt like God was giving her um, freedom from the hindrances of the spirit of death. She worked in a cancer hospital, in a, in a cancer treatment hospital. So I suppose it's not that surprising. And um, in this case, smoky burning, I do remember um, sometimes in prayer meetings where we as a group would begin to smell burning because we were praying in, in, in the spirit together. Um, and so I would be asking the question, Lord, what, what are you alerting me to by letting me smell this? What is the purpose and what is the strategy? So, God is revealing this smell to you for a reason. What is it that I'm smelling? Take time to sit quietly with him and, and engage with him in the spirit realm and ask him by that, that activation that I just did with you there where you're meeting with Jesus and then say to him, Lord, that smell that I've been smelling, can you show me what that's all about? Can you tell me what that's all about? Because sometimes if we're trying to again, use our brains and almost like, I need an answer, I need an answer, I need an answer. It's almost like a jarring in the spirit where we just need to quieten ourselves and receive revelation from that place of rest. So I'd encourage you to do that and anything else that you're not sure about, any dreams, anything that you're not getting a, a direct or speedy answer to, we need to be diligent to search out the glory of God in a matter, as we were saying earlier. So take the time, take the time to ask the question. I hope that answers you happily. Some things, there's no method to these things. It really is just a learning to follow Holy Spirit, learning to trust Jesus and walking with him in it and learning to discern um, as we go on that journey. Okay, that's great. One more last question, um, SJ. So Francis, Francis, I believe you're also in France. Um, he says, hi, SJ, please, how to understand vision when I receive them in the middle of the day when I was not really focused on spiritual things, usually while working? Thank you. Hmm. Well, what I would do with that is what I would recommend when you get a dream is when you get a dream, you're not really conscious about receiving it because you're asleep. Um, if you're getting a vision in a moment when you're working and not thinking about something else, if you can't stop, ask the Holy, if you can't stop and focus on it and you're in the middle of a meeting or something, ask the Lord to download into your spirit what you need to know. And then when you get an opportunity to get some quiet time, whether it's in the afternoon and you lock yourself away somewhere or you, you have to wait till you go home, then engage with that again 
uh, and ask the Lord to reveal to you what he wanted to reveal to you. Or even don't be afraid to say, Lord, can I see again what you were trying to reveal to me? Can I go back to that place where you gave me that vision? And can you show me and give me understanding of what it is you want me to know? Sometimes also you might get a flash of a vision. You might be on a bus or a train or something um, or you're putting the kids to bed or you're in the middle of a job or you're talking to a friend and you get a flash or an impression of something. Take a note on your phone, write it down somewhere that you know you can come back to later um, because you can often get caught out by revelation. Um, and, and I think, you know, you you hear a lot of things about people who write books and author novels and fictional novels and poems and so write songs. And they will say, you know, they're trying to get a word. They're trying to get uh, the next line of a song or the next harmony of a song or poem or whatever it might be. And it can come at the most random times, like when they're driving a car or when they're doing something, it's almost like our spirits catch things when we're not necessarily thinking about it. So you might actually want to do a voice recording. Nearly every single smartphone has a voice recorder on it. Just take a note or write it down. Don't miss the moment and then go back and do the searching out with God later when you have time. Hope that's helpful. Can you, hello, yes. Okay. Thank you, Sarah Jane, that was really helpful. I think we got more out of you. Thank you so much. Uh, if you guys have any more questions, you can come and speak to us afterwards. It's five o'clock now. We bless you, Sarah Jane. We thank you so much for joining us today. For really, you, um, SJ might come in the future to get more out of you. Uh, but oh. we are, we've been really blessed and we thank God for your life. We thank you for what you're doing for the kingdom. And so um, we're going to close for today. I think Pastor Dave, what you'll do, close us in prayer. Uh, I think let's give it up for Sarah Jane. Thank you, River Church, Canning Town. Thank you for having me. It was great to be with you. And I do hope we get to see each other in person soon. And thanks for letting me join online because I wouldn't have been able to join you otherwise this weekend because I'm, as I say, far away on an island in the, in the west of Scotland. So bless you and may God reveal more of himself to you. And I'll see you again, I hope. Thank you, Susie, for the invitation. Love to everybody. Have a great weekend. Amen. Pastor Dave? Let's just pray. We've been fed today. And what we need to do is just make sure that God just seals that anointing. We don't want the enemy to steal any of that that has been shared with us, fed to us. So let's just pray and ask the Holy Spirit just to to seal that. Lord Jesus, we thank you for the words that have been shared to us this afternoon. We thank you for your anointing. We thank you for the power and the blessings that have been poured upon us. And Lord, right now, we just pray your Holy Spirit just to seal those words in our lives. The Lord, we, we just say today, we want nothing to be lost that is of you. We want nothing to be stolen, nothing to be taken from us. Lord Jesus, right now, we just pray your anointing to flow into our lives. Lord, I just have that sense almost like it's the children of Israel getting the manna. Lord, we thank you that there is enough for every day, that we don't have to store up. It's not about us storing up for tomorrow what you've given today. But Lord, it's about us using, utilizing that which has been given, that as we begin to feed on what you've given into us, that tomorrow, Lord, there'll be more food and more food, and every day there'll be more. So, Lord, right now, we just want to just feed and feast on what has been given into our lives. Lord, we pray that it will become, Lord, not only sustenance, but it will be more than that. It will be anointed. It will be just uh, taking us into new areas, new ministry, new things in the spirit realm for you. And Lord, we know that every day there will be enough food. There will be more than enough. That tomorrow, Lord, will be fed again. That the day after will be fed again. That the more we eat of you, the more we take that which you've given and we feast upon it, Lord Jesus, the more that will be there the next day, refreshing us, anointing us, filling us with all that you have. And so, Lord, we pray today that you will just begin to f just pour out more, Lord, into our lives, that we will not become fat because we refuse to take it, or we'll not try and store up and wait for another day. But, Lord, help us to utilize that which you've given us today to put it into practice in the knowledge that, Lord, there will always be more from you, that the more we eat, the more you will provide 
The more you give us, the more, Lord, we will have. The you, Lord, will be glorified in us. Lord, we just thank you for Sarah Jane. We thank you for Suze. We thank you for all those who've been ministering to us today. And we just pray for more of you, more of your Holy Spirit, more of your anointing, more of your grace, that you will just pour out blessing upon us for the glory of your name, Lord. Amen. Amen. Bless you all. Amen. Let's just take this moment to praise him in our own way. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Lord. Oh, King of heaven. We worship you alone. You are worthy of all praise. Who is like unto you, ever ancient of days. You are from everlasting to everlasting. There is none like you. You are the same yesterday, today, and forever. You never change. You are constant and faithful. Constant and faithful. You're always good, so we Worship you with everything, Lord. So we pour out praise and honor you on your holy name. Jesus today? Are you hungry and thirsty for the spirit of the living God today? Oh, show him how hungry you are. Show him your hunger. Show him your heart. Worthy is your name. 